When the seed of the cross does not bring fruit, what follows next? While everyone was marveling at all that Jesus did, he said to his disciples, Listen carefully to what I am about to tell you. The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. But they did not understand what this meant. It was hidden from them, so that they did not grasp it, and they were afraid to ask him about it. After a new miracle performed by Jesus, a wave of enthusiasm spread among the people. But this enthusiasm had false expectations regarding the next phase from the plan of God Jesus had to fulfill. They only expected only good things to follow for Jesus, and for Israel too. They expected the shallow physical salvation to happen. But a salvation without the cross, a salvation without the sacrifice of Jesus, and a salvation without the self-denial and daily cross of the disciples of Jesus. In the middle of that deceitful enthusiasm described in Luke chapter 9, Jesus insisted in his teachings to his disciples on the true way of salvation. Listen carefully, the Son of Man will suffer. Jesus tries to put in their hearts the seed of the cross, but because regarding this topic their hearts were petrified, they could not receive the light from the Father to understand the cross. In the same time, they were afraid to ask because they were probably afraid to find out the answer. In these conditions, the seed of the cross did not find a good soil in the hearts of the disciples and did not bring fruit there. But could this unfruitfulness remain without consequences? Of course not. The next reactions of the disciples from Luke chapter 9 illustrate what are the exact consequences after they rejected the thought of the cross. Let us explore them. Because the thought of the cross did not enter their hearts, another thought found room there. An argument started among the disciples as to which of them would be the greatest. Without the cross, self-affirmation and tough competition within the team of the apostles started and threatened their unity and their relationships. After this, John said to Jesus, We saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he is not one of us. John thought he did a good thing, but Jesus explained he was wrong. The spirit of tough competition with other groups of workers inflamed the spirit of the apostolic team. They did not see the glory and joy of God in other ministries, but just a threat to their glory and fame. And after this, when Jesus was rejected by a Samaritan village, James and John asked Jesus, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them? But Jesus rebuked them and explained to them that the Son of Man came not to destroy but to save what was lost. Without the cross, mercy was replaced with judgment and the power of God was to be used not for salvation but for destruction. The lesson is so clear for us all. We cannot remain neutral in front of the seed of the cross. If we do not receive the seed of the cross, foreign and sinful seeds will develop in our lives. Without the cross, not humbleness, unity and love will flourish, but pride, split and judgment will grow instead. The seed of the cross explains to us that we, as disciples of Jesus, have to follow His example. For us, the daily cross and the self-denial mean to reject our own impulses of self-affirmation, of earthly competition and of judgment toward the ones who hurt us or experience moral failure, and then to rejoice for other success and manifest mercy, forgiveness and love towards difficult people. But without receiving the seed of the cross, none of this is possible. Only the thought of the cross, profoundly understood and profoundly accepted by us, can overcome the impulses of our selfish nature and can bring the spiritual fruits through which God will be glorified. If you do not accept to stay on the cross, you will end by crucifying others. If you do not accept the way of the cross, you will end in hurting others. You will hurt others for their success or for their failure. If they choose good, you will envy them and contest them. If they choose bad, you will judge them. When they hurt you, 
the way of self-denial, forgiveness, self-sacrifice, mercy and interceding for their rehabilitation and salvation will be so far from your soul. The way of the cross is the way of true love, the only way of love in this sinful and fallen world. And love is the greatest command, in fact, the single command, because all the others are included in it. If you do not truly love, you are nothing and you miss your Christian calling. Come back to the cross once again, receive the glorious thought of the cross, and true love will come, and true love will triumph, and true love will abound.